Did you know as we are locked in that every day that goes by, God is breaking some shackles off of our lives? And did you know that's a miracle in itself, that we are drawing nigh to God, we are drawing close to God every day, and we have nothing but time to read his word and meditate on his goodness and worship him. Aren't we grateful for that miracle on this Monday morning? Um, We always say it is Miracle Monday, and this is Rise and Pray lives depend on it. We are so grateful for you joining us today as we go before the throne room of grace to war against principalities and powers, to see shackles break, and to be a witness of how prayer can transform lives. A great bit welcome to our returning callers, and for those joining us for the very first time, we are here Monday through Friday starting at 555, which starts our praise and worship. And at 6 a.m. to 615, we have prayer with a war cry focus. Please like us on Facebook. And we do have a YouTube channel out there. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel where we download uh, uh, over two years, two years of prayers. That's over 600 prayers that are out there that you can listen to. There are times in our life that we just need prayer, prayer, prayer. We can't pray for ourselves. So we thank God for an avenue where strongholds can be broken through prayer. Today we're coming out of 1 Kings 21, and it's... And I, I, I behoove you to go back and read all of First Kings 21, but for time purposes, I had to break it into sections. First Kings 21, 17 to 19, and then we're going to go to 25 and 29 in the NIV. First Kings 21, 17 to 19, and then 25 to 29 in the NIV. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishabite. Go down to meet Ahab, king of Israel, who rules in Samaria. He is now in Nobath vineyard, where he has gone to take possession of it. Say to him, this is what the Lord says. Have you not murdered a man and seized his property? Then say to him, this is what the Lord says. In the place where dogs licked up Naboth's blood, dogs will lick up your blood. Yes yours. There was never anyone like Ahab who sold himself to do evil in the eyes of the Lord, urged on by Jezebel, his wife. He behaved in the vilest manner by going after idols like the Amorites. The Lord drove out before Israel. Verse 27, and when Ahab heard these words, he tore his clothes, put on sackcloth and fasted. He lay in sackcloth and went around meekly. Then the the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishabite. Have you noticed how Ahab has humbled himself before me? Because he has humbled himself, I will not bring this disaster in his day, but I will bring it on his house in the days of his son. Covetedness. Covetedness is defined as an individual who is lusting for what rightfully belongs to others. In 1 Kings 21, we read Ahab took possession of Naboth, the Jezreelite's vineyard, through the act of his wife, Jezebel, who plotted and killed Naboth. The stoning of Naboth over a piece of land for a vegetable garden shows the brutal and immoral character of Jezebel and Ahab. Covetedness acts as a doorkeeper to jealousy, hatred, envy, strife, murder, slander, adultery, and a host of other evil works of the flesh. Covetedness starts with a false entitlement, which causes us to feel we deserve, have a right to, or have claim to something that is really not rightfully ours. It could be a position, money, attention, a title, clothing, or just about anything. Covetedness seeks to destroy influence, sabotage ministries, undermine authority, and uplifter property. And, and pilfer property. I call this spirit the spiritual mob because of its gangster-like 
characteristic. It wants to hinder the move of the Holy Spirit and draw attention to itself. Our war cry focus today is we are free to share the good news. Free to share the good news. Dear gracious and eternal Father, we thank you for such a profound word, Father God. We thank you, Father God, as many have been toiling all night, praying and supplicating at your feet, Father God, because this was your week, God. This was holy week, Father God, and we know you are a risen Savior, God. And as you have risen and given us power, and you have given us your Holy Spirit, we're asking you on the name of Jesus on this morning, Father God, that you will come and sup with us, that you will your ears will be inclined to our prayers, Father God, that you will be listening to what we have to say today, that you can, Father God, bless this prayer like never before and change the heart of man and change the heart of your people, Father God, and endure us with power to do your will on today, Father God. Father God, there's none like you, God. We rejoice even in the midst of a pandemic, God. We're still rejoicing. We're still giving your name glory and honor and praise, God. And so today, Father God, we seek the simplicity of your word, Father God. Your word is easy to entreat, Father God. And we need to understand what you're speaking to us today, how we need to repent and turn from our wicked ways, and how we need to fight off the enemy, Father God, on today. Father God, we love you. There's none above you, Father God. You are adored by us, Father God, because early we seek you. And God, we are, we are, we're trying to prove ourselves to you that we worship you in spirit and in truth, Father God, through our prayers and supplication. God, we thank you, God, that your name brings hope to our lives, God. The mighty work of healing and deliverance deliverance will be manifested on this earth. We decree it and we declare you are the resurrection and the life. You are the Christ. You are the Messiah. You are the good shepherd. You are a restorer of hope, God. And today we won't let go of that hope, God. You are our living hope, Father. And we thank you. Restore unto us the joy of our salvation. Uphold us in thy free spirit, God. Give Give us the freedom we desire to spread the good news, Father God. For covetousness has hold us back, God. For season after season, Father God, we've been desiring to do your work. We've been desiring, Father God, to lift your name up high. But something has been keeping us bound, God, in the name of Jesus. My sister prayed about intimidation. We won't be intimidated no more, Father God. But we thank you, God, that we're understanding the root of this intimidation, God. This root of covetousness, God, in the name of Jesus. It is written, he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement, chastisement for our peace is upon him, and by his stripes, we are healed. We are healed. We are healed. We are healed. We're not going to stop declaring, no matter what we see going on around us, we're not going to stop declaring that we are healed by the stripes of Jesus Christ. We stand in there, flat-footed, and believing firmly that you're going to come in and do a new thing, and now it shall spring forth, Father God. Father, in Matthew 28, you said the Great Commission, it is the Great Commission, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of the nation. Baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always. You are with us always, Daddy God. To the very end of the age, God. So today, Father God, we clearly understand the process of judgment. It is an invitation to repentance. The prophecy of judgment is an invitation to repentance. So we humble ourselves, God, and we seek your mercy on today, God. We thank you, God, that you're going to bestow mercy upon us like you bestowed mercy on Ahab, God. Even though he was going in the wrong direction, he humbled himself with sackcloth. 
We know that when we pray to you, things move, God. Things are moving in the atmosphere. And even though we don't see things moving right now, God, we're believing by faith that things are moving and things are shifting and things are being rearranged, God. So we're praying for those who are mourning the loss of a loved one uh, on this day, God. We know that there's seven stages of grief, Father, God. So help us to determine and understand what stage we're in, Father, God. In the name of Jesus, and help us to be gentle with ourselves during the process as we mourn the grief. We mourn and grief over our loved ones, God, in the name of Jesus. Help us, God, to adhere to your word that declares to die is great gain, Father God. For Jesus rose on the third day with all power in his hand, Father God. And we, and greater works shall we do, Father God. So we're holding on to that promise, God. Help us to be able to comfort those that are mourning, God. Help us to comfort those that are distraught, God. Help us to comfort those that are confused, God. And help us to preach the gospel because we are free to spread the good news on today, God. We pray for those currently in ICU, God. And the authority of God, I command in the name of Jesus that the spirit, this demonic spirit leaves this body, this spirit of infirmity. We tell it to go, God, in the name of Jesus. Unclog the lungs, unclog the windpipes, unclog the heart, and unclog the mind to receive Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. I pray for those in ICU. I'm asking you to fill their vessel with the word of God. We decree and declare that they shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. We speak to that situation right now. We tell them to breathe in the name Hallelujah, for we are the children of the Most High God. Father, send forth your angels right now into the ICU, God. In the name of Jesus, we lift up Mother Glenda to you today, God. We know that she's going through so much, Father God. So we're asking you in the name of Jesus to comfort her. God, get her strength and God that she can pray for her own family, God. In the name of Jesus, strengthen her family. Heal her family, God. In the name of Jesus, God. Father, we understand that covetousness is a doorkeeper and his discretion opens doors to other principalities and strongholds. On today, we decree and declare that the works of Jezebel is defeated. Father, we have been set free to proclaim the good news, to proclaim and preach the acceptable year of the Lord in the name of Jesus, to announce that the time has come when the Lord will save his people, God. Glory to your name, Hosanna. We are experiencing movement like the one in Acts, that day in the upper room, Father God. We are on one accord with one mind in prayer and supplication, knowing that the harvest is plentiful, God, knowing that salvation has come to the nations in the name of Jesus, because through repentance, we shall heal the land. You shall heal the land. You, Jesus, are our messenger of hope. So we thank you all today. We will no longer tolerate the antagonizers that come against the gospel. Jezebel is a defeated foe in the name of Jesus. And those that frustrated who preach the good news, this is the season we shall reap a major harvest of souls in the name of Jesus. We decree and declare the gifts of us that the Spirit will move into full operation in this season in the name of Jesus. We rebuke in the name of Jesus every foul, filthy thing, God, that is assigned to destroy our influence, assigned to sabotage our ministry, assigned to undermine authority, assigned to take away the property that you have given us for the gentle bell spirit is defeated by the blood of the Lamb. So we repent on today for the works of the flesh, God. We repent for being pious and having a pious attitude, puffed up with pride, God, in the name of Jesus, for blatantly disregarding authority, God, in the name of Jesus, for being contrary to the laws of spiritual protocols, in the name of Jesus, for refusing to submit to God and resist the devil. So show us, Father, 